Hey guys, how's it going? I uh, just want to do a short little video here to kind of explain some changes that we're going to be making in uh, programming over the next uh, several weeks and months. Um, just uh, to kind of give you an idea behind what we're looking at and what we're trying to, to accomplish here. Um, we'll start with the focus that we're going to do and then we'll get into uh, these graphs here behind me. Um, as far as the focus goes, we're going to be doing quite a bit of stuff here. We're going to be um, testing some kind of basic movements uh, that are important to life and athleticism. Um, those are going to be primal slash basic type movements. Uh, that's the definition of primal in this particular case. Uh, we'll be pushing, we'll be pulling, we'll be squatting, we'll be hinging, we'll be lunging, we'll be stepping up and we'll be carrying items. Um, over the next two weeks, you're gonna see all those things in a test form. Um, as, especially in the first two weeks, we're gonna spend some time working on some uh, testing. Um, some of them will be heavy lifts, uh, five rep maxes, three rep maxes. Uh, we'll be looking at some gymnastics, testing, um, we will be looking at some carrying testing, we'll also be looking at some aerobic capacity testing, and we're also going to, over the next uh, several weeks and months, test Helen as one of the benchmarks. Helen, of course, is three rounds, 400 meter run, uh, 21 kettlebell swings, and 12 pull-ups. There'll be ways to uh, scale that for people that don't have pull-ups. Um, also, part of the focus is going to be posture and position. Um, it's not so much, certainly we want full range of motion, but more importantly, we want your posture and position to be uh, correct because once posture, and, once posture gives out, um, you are putting yourself at risk to injury. So one of the main underlying themes is, and what we'll be stressing is posture and position, good solid upright posture. You'll see uh, ways to reinforce this in warm-ups as we go through these next several weeks and months, um, helping you figure out how to brace your spine and torso so that under a load, you don't collapse or taco and get yourself in an unsafe position. We'll also be looking at energy systems. That's what these graphs are all about. And we'll talk about that here in a second. And then uh, finally, we're also going to be, uh, we'll be sprinting over the next several weeks. Um, basically, breaking that down as a skill, and you'll see things in the lunge and the step up that will actually transfer over to your ability to run. Um, we will, the, and the reason we're doing sprinting, one, it's, it's summer, it's warm. It's much easier to warm up for a sprint in the summer uh, as, a, as opposed to the winter when it's cold. The other thing is working on your sprinting technique will help your endurance type running. Um, we are looking at efficiency and getting you into good posture and position. Again, for the sprints, um, there'll be ample warm up. We'll be doing two different types of sprints over the next several weeks and months and that will be intensity sprints, which will be full top speed. And then we'll be doing volume type sprints, which will actually be sustaining good posture and position at a, at a, at a lower intensity rate as we, as we do those runs. But focus on that is keeping up the same pace with pretty strict rest there. The intensity sprints will actually be rest kind of as needed. It'll be um, several times rest to one ratio of sprint. So probably something like a five to six to one type uh, rest to sprint. If it's a 40 meter sprint and it takes you five seconds, you'll be resting probably a minute, maybe two minutes just to get that full uh, fuel back in to, to go top speed again. All right, the other thing will be posterior dominance. We'll be looking at using the hamstrings, being able to pull through using the hamstrings in your sprint, using the hamstrings in lunges and step ups, um, helping you figure out how that sprint is a pull through, not necessarily a push. All right, let's talk about the energy systems. Um, 
So this, when we talk about energy systems, we're talking about the dominant energy system at the time. These things uh, will actually, they're all kind of going at once simultaneously. And you'll see based on the time and power, uh, one kind of takes over for the other. That doesn't mean that, let's say you're running a half marathon, you will go through all of these energy systems um, cyclically, right? You'll There'll be times when you're going through uh, a high power one, there'll be times when you're going through this glycolytic one, and then there'll be another time where you'll be going through the aerobic. The aerobic will be the dominant one in a half marathon, but that doesn't mean that you won't be using the other one. So we'll start, start here left to right. Um, creatine phosphate, that is high power. That's what this axis is, is power. This one is time. It's high power, short duration, right? What you want to think about there is when we're sprinting, our dominant, our dominant energy system is going to be the creatine phosphate system. For the most part, our sprints will last, um, will not last more than 10 seconds. They're going to be short type sprints. So you will, your predominant energy system is going to be that creatine phosphate system. When we're doing our rep maxes, when we're if we're doing a one rep max or we're doing a three rep max, anything that's a short time duration, your main energy system is going to be this creatine phosphate system, right? Another word for that is uh, James OPT Fitzgerald says, uh, if you don't know who OPT is, OPT is the first winner of the CrossFit Games and he owns an organization called OPEX Fitness. Um, super smart guy in the fitness space. Um, he calls this particular energy system gain. That's where the gains come from. That's where you get stronger. That's where you get a little bit more muscular. Um, that's where you get faster and more powerful, right? These are the gain. This is a gain uh, energy system. The second energy system is very uh, popular in the CrossFit space. It's the glycolytic. It's a shorter time duration, a little bit longer than this. The creatine phosphate gets into probably about 10 seconds. Um, you're pushing it a little bit out to 20 seconds. This glycolytic is gonna be anything that's about 20 seconds to about two and a half, about a minute and a half to two minutes. It's, it's something you cannot sustain. You can't sustain that high energy, that high, um, it actually can go out to probably about two minutes. Um, that's where you start to see a little bit of a drop off um, on this particular scale. It's uh, a little bit fuzzy if you can't see it. But um, you'll have a big high energy. You'll try to keep that going for as long as you can. And then you'll see this big drop off and then it levels off, right? Um, to where you won't be able to sustain that particular thing. Um, that is what uh, OPT would call the pain um, energy system. To get to this, you're gonna have to go through quite a bit of um, that kind of lactic acid burning, that lactic, um, you feel that burn in the muscles, uh, that you know, pain in the lungs where you're trying to get, you can't get oxygen enough. Uh, both of these systems here are what we would refer to as anaerobic. They're gonna be without oxygen um, as you're working. That's why you're, it challenges your working muscles quite a bit because there's just no oxygen present. Your, your rate of, of, of work is outpacing your ability to deliver oxygen, all right? Uh, the third one is uh, one that a lot of people are really familiar with. It's that uh, oxidative or aerobic type of uh, thing. You can, it's very low power, um, but you can sustain it forever. This would be kind of a conversational pace. Um, think long distance running, uh, long distance rowing, um, even, even longer hero type uh, workouts in CrossFit tend to be oxidative or tend to be aerobic. Um, you're trying to just sustain a pace throughout and keep that kind of pace level all the way through. Um, these, this one here, uh, compared to that one, you just can't sustain it. This one you can sustain. This one here, if you're going in that real glycolytic and that real high power, you're not going to be able to carry on a conversation. Um, also, while you're in a, in a, in a sprint that's you know, 10, uh, 40 meters to 80 meters, something like that, or even up to 100 meters, 
Uh, you wouldn't be able to carry on a conversation in that short time. You're really working on getting oxygen to those working muscles as much as you can to get through that in as quick as possible. Um, this one, you could, pop, you could keep this pace all the way through. So um, in, kind of in conclusion, we're gonna be focusing on these. Um, we will have probably a little bit more of this energy system and the sustainability, uh, which again, that's what OPT calls this oxidative. It's sustain, it's sustainability. You can sustain that pace all the way through. We'll spend a lot of time in those, building an aerobic capacity base, um, which will actually help this one later on as we test something like Helen. Um, this one will be a little less present We'll see it, but not uh, not not that often. Um, we'll be spending a little bit more time in these other energy systems. All right.